Church, now's the time we consider the importance of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And at this point of our worship, we usually gather and partake of the Lord's Supper. Now, why do we do this? Why take the Lord's Supper? Now, we're under quarantine. Do we still have to? Well, where would we get an answer to that question? What would we use as our guide as a reference to do that? So for much of what we do in the practice of religion and our religious observance, we try to look at instructions that are found in the Word of God. We also try to look at what the New Testament church did in an attempt to practice the same way that they did as they were worshiping. So, hmm, wonder what they did. What was happening in the New Testament church uh, around the, the, the start of the New Testament church when they were taking the Lord's Supper? Now, imagine with me what it had to be like if you were one of the original 3,000 that were added to the church. Let's look. Let's look in Acts chapter 4, verses 42 through 47. The word says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among them as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Can you imagine the, the euphoria they experienced in the New Testament church? The spirit of love, the spirit of cooperation and care for each other. You know, these people were able to share memories of Jesus. Many of them were probably direct. Some had probably walked with the disciples alongside Jesus and listened to him as he taught. They had witnessed his miracles. They had shared his story with their friends as they had brought them in to see Jesus. Others in the New Testament church likely had never met Jesus, likely never were around when he was preaching and teaching, yet there were preachers in that day that were able to deliver God's word that they could understand. And because of that understanding, they knew that they needed to follow God's plan. There were miraculous proofs that were going around that day, so it had to draw them to God. But then everything changed. You know, they had had many years of great fellowship with other believers. They had these great preachers. You know, they had Peter, they had Paul, they had Barnabas, all of those great preachers, and they had temples and synagogues that they worshiped in, but suddenly they were unable. The Jews continued to apply pressure. They didn't want them to, to stay in Christianity. They wanted them to return to Judaism. The Greeks and the Romans, they began to challenge them, even to persecute Christians. Suddenly, their worship had to change. No longer could they be as open in their fellowship and in their worship. In many cases, they, re they resorted to hiding so that they could worship in peace. But when they were hiding, they were still holding on tightly to Jesus. It's likely in that day they were still teaching others. It's likely they were still worshiping, but they were worshiping in their homes, not the same. Many figured out a way where they could worship with their friends and with their family. Now, our times have changed nowhere near the magnitude of what happened in the New Testament church, but you know, there are some similarities. Our world circumstances have limited our ability to fellowship like we once did, and I miss it, and I know you do too. But you know, if we were to gather together, some of us would be in serious jeopardy, would have some severe medical risk that really we shouldn't force ourselves to take. And we have this vehicle of technology that allows us to gather in some form. It's made it possible to recreate much of what we do in our worship. Just as we're talking about the Lord's Supper, you'll be able to take it at home. It also allows us to go through our songs and even hear a lesson from the Word. Yet it's not the same. But you know, even though we're at home, even though we're not in this big auditorium with all of our friends and our family and other Christians, we still know Jesus. We too should hang on to Jesus in every way, just like the New Testament church did. Now our Lord's Supper that we're taking now, it, it brings back memories of Jesus that we've been taught. It allows us to hold on to him as well. Now, we've studied all our life. We've studied stories from the Gospels about the life of Jesus, right? We know that his life was perfect and he lived it for us. We also understand that he was abused, that it was very cruel what the Romans and the Jews did to him. He endured that for us. We know that he was crucified on the cross for us. We know that he was buried in a tomb for us. We know that Jesus was raised from the dead for us. 
Now, we know these things and our worship is not the same, but let's try to be like the early church as we take this Lord's Supper. Let's hold on to our Savior. Let's hold on to Jesus Christ. Let's take the bread to remember His body and let's take the fruit of the vine to remember His blood. Pray with me, please. Holy Father, bless us now as we are about to take of the bread which is supposed to represent your son's body. Bless us with the ability that we have to continue to overcome the differences that are in our world right now. And bless us with peace. Bless us with health. Bless us with safety. Bless us now as we try to worship in a different way. Help us all to be strengthened, even revitalized in our faith. Help us to make this communion even more personal to help us weekly restore and renew our faith and our walk with you. Help us to take this bread in an acceptable manner and bless it and help us to remember your son and his body. It's in his name we pray, amen. If you will join me in prayer again. Holy Father, in the same way now, we ask that you bless us as we take this fruit of the vine. Help our hearts to be drawn closer to you and help us to be drawn to the memory of the blood of your son that was given for us. And hopefully so that we might someday be raised with you to live eternally. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for listening in. Can't wait to see you again.